this is the actual letter that I'm going to give to my dad after this. I haven't seen my father in seven years, but his presence is in my life every single day. And when I started to work on this project, it uncovered basically a third rail in my heart. And this is a part that, you know, the brotherhood of fathers that I have with me got me through this. Because it was the first time I ever took a minute to think about all the things that got me to a place to be the father I am to my two-year-old daughter. And this is a child who wakes up every day laughing and smiling and proving to me that through all the things that I went through with a father who was there, but was there in a way that was not, was not the best, but he was there, but was not the best type of person that I needed. He, he sowed the seed in me to make me the person I am no matter what uh, I tell you about him here. And I want you to know that, you know, I love this man. And I've never said that, in a, I haven't said that ever, to be frank. I think I've, this might be the first time I've ever said that I love my dad. Because I have to love him despite his flaws, because he made me the father to this beautiful child that I have. So I'm, I've been examining myself through this process and bonding with these brothers who pulled me literally from day one, the, the first day that I walked into the office to have a discussion about this project, I broke down. I cried, I cried, and I cried. I cried right there with that man, David, David Acosta. And that was my first time meeting him. And it was about 10 minutes later, after I left and got myself together again, Greg came through the door and helped me pull it together. And we talked, and the well was there, and we talked. And I started to unearth feelings that I had buried. And it was feelings for my father that I didn't take the time to put into any level of context in my life prior to this moment, prior, prior to this project which at first, it scared me to death because I had to confront this place where my father existed in this dark spot. So to give you an idea about the man that I'm about to tell you about, he was a West Philly guy, the youngest of six, and he met my mom, who was from Devon, PA. So my dad's from the bottom, and my mom's from Devon. If y'all from Philly, you know that's kind of weird. <laughs> so they met in Atlantic City. And they fell in love and decided to elope. And my father, not really having much uh, skill, decided to join the army. And they shipped him off to Germany. And we lived there for a while. And that's where my story begins. I was born there in 1970. And that's where this story begins. And where it ends is, <laughs> it doesn't end. And that's why I call it Stone's Throw, because I'm still in midair. I'm still trying to figure things out. I don't know where I'm actually going to land. You know, but I know what I am. I know I'm a father, and I know I was a good son. And one of the most important things that I've kind of come out of this project with is forgiveness. Because I, as you'll hear, had had to, had to struggle with being able to forgive. And that is the one thing that I believe is going to help me grow as a father. Because there will be times where I'll probably tap into some part of, the, of Ray Jackson in me. And I'm gonna have to 
figure out a way to forgive myself for doing that. So, I want to read this to you now. Stone's throw. My first memory is you mid-snowstorm, shrinking into the distance on a long stretch of highway, somewhere in Germany. It is a silent memory. And my mother's subtle geometry is broken. Arms flailing as if she is drowning. A decade later, I'm training for a race, a race without consequence or meaning until I'm much older. You are a coach, you are dad. You are the voice of my every narrated thought. During this race, my cadence outpaced the finish line applause. It's my final competition. Your work ethic, a moving target of unrelenting ivy into my adulthood. That is something I can thank you for. Our last connection is severed by my second place in this race. Your dream deferred then and before. One late night, you stood over top of me, an eight-year-old me. I wish you were dead. The jagged utterance still cuts into nights 38 years come and gone by. You thought I was asleep. I cried into blackness, but I still loved you. Mom loved you, I don't know how. She's still trying to teach me forgiveness, arms flailing as if she were drowning. This quiet contemplation is like a tornado tearing through my town. And I close my eyes tight. Seven years ago, with my eyes open, I asked why beating her in front of me was what our life was all about. You were coach, you were dad, and in that moment, you were silent. So I smile and I can raise my hands to the sky blocking the sun and blocking the punches from the past. I grew into a man who found a love made more better, a stone's throw from that devil in the detail. Thank you.